everyone. This is Bart and Stacy from The Sound Couple. And today is the day. We have the trifecta going on. We have new gear. So we're going to be taking out the CDL 10 P's and our sub 18s for our maiden voyage first gig. We have a new venue, mm -hmm. a venue we've never been to before. And then we have familiar musicians. Mm -hmm. So I will say we have one of three things. So we've talked about that before. There's the venue, the gear and the band. And today it is technically a new PA and we're going to take these out and give them their first real gig test. Mm -hmm. Stacey and I are driving separate to take care of some other things we need to do, but you'll be with me for most of the day, Stacy, part of the day. Stick around, everybody. We got a lot to show you. We got to get this stuff packed in the van, and we got to head out the door here really quick. See you when we get there. everything right yep that's everything all right we're gonna hit the road here okay it's 153 we're a few minutes ahead of our time that we were told we could be here which was two and this is a very busy little area right here we weren't given any loading instruction specifics except a contact name that i just tried calling and i got a voicemail so stacy is heading in to see if she can find out where we're loading in. And I have a feeling it might be right in this. Uh, you can kind of see it there. There's a fire lane, no parking, but we got to figure that out yet. So once again, just another example of logistics, everyone. And I'm glad we got here a little bit on the earlier side of our arrival time so we could get this stuff figured out. All right, we'll check in in a minute. I told you it was going to be a load in. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be a load in and kind of a small area. They're going to be opening up the ballroom here, but yeah, I think we shall. It's only a six piece. <laughs> yeah, it's still going to be piece. tight. It's still going to be yeah. tight up here though. And this is, these walls are coming down, but we're going to get loading because even with a smaller setup, this is going to be. You get a lot of tight corners. A lot of tight corners. Control. So I don't think we're going to even be able to extend the multi-cart. Yeah. All right, let's show them the load in. Where we just were, let's check out this load in. There's load in. <laughs> you, load, yeah, load in. Yeah, that's a load in, Stacy. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Yep. We're getting everything loaded up and we are gonna grab an additional cart. And unfortunately, just some of the corners here are tight and the elevator small. One of our typical methods of squeezing more gear on this cart at an angle like that, I think it's just gonna be too hard for us to navigate some of the corners. So we're just gonna get another cart, um, which is fine. We did get the cases, the soft padded cases, and we also got the casters for the saw. And the cases for sure, I mean, we would get those regardless, just because our CDL 12s still look brand new after four years, almost four years of using them. With these being the polypropylene cabinets, I think they're gonna be a little bit more prone to scratches. And the casters, you know, I'm gonna say yay to casters, right, Stacy? Yes. We've kind of struggled with that. I know it, the natural tendency is to say, well, why wouldn't you want casters? Part of it is the van pack. And so this, this space right here, when you're trying to pack in a, in a truck like this, 
inches do matter. So you want to look at the cost benefit. We're losing a little packing space, but you know, for a gig like this, otherwise we'd have to two wheel them. So we're happy we have the casters and it's just, a, it's just one of those things. Uh, depending on, on your pack, if I was going into a small, like a more like a minivan or something like that, that's when I'd really consider whether or not the casters is, is going to be something that of, of a benefit versus taking up the space. So this is going to take us as the speakers are rolling away. Uh, this is going to take us a few trips. So we're going to focus on getting the gear up there and hopefully won't take too long. We weren't sure what we were in for, and this is a little bit more than I guess we were anticipating. What's our plan, Stacy? Elevator trips, total trolley and set of speakers, total trolley, set of speakers, and then that one. Since the elevator's not that big. Okay, and, and are we gonna leave the things back here, do you think, or are we gonna try to do it in waves? I think we're gonna have to do it in waves because there's people that are yeah, there's it's not. Yeah, I think this stuff is okay. I think we'll just pull it over here. And there's people all over this complex. Not that anybody's gonna do anything, but I think we're just gonna do it together in waves, right? Or are you gonna go up and then am I gonna keep coming back for gear? We however. Okay, it's two twenty-six. We got here about I think it was one fifty. Decided to split the load up load up. So she's going up. I think I'm gonna go get this big one here, and maybe both of us can come down for this last, these last two items. Again, you know, it's evaluating the area you're in, and we're in a decent area, but anytime where there's opportunity, as far as like leaving gear unattended, it doesn't really matter where you're at. But when we're doing gigs where this these types of load and it's always nice to have two people just to have the extra ability to be to not leave your gear unattended and that's what we try to do is limit our exposure time of leaving our gear unattended and now we do have some smalls that could be grabbed so i'm going to try to get back out here and also looking at the money that you're, you're leaving out here too in through kitchens and tight corners Wow, we are just making this by the hair of our... What was chin, it? Chin, chin. That's the saying. Wow, this is tight quarters. Good thing, oh, good thing the rock and roller has gotten service. The wheels are turning about as fast as they have ever turned. Hold, hold on. Don't, you gotta... Yeah, I think what we decided to do, we're going to go on the other side of the door. As long as we're not blocking the door, that's what's his words, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if we do that, that'll free up some nice front space and we should feel, be a little more uncomfortable. Okay, Stace, let's show these cases off. What do we got? They're pretty much the same operation as the other one, right? Except these do, I don't know, maybe personas listen to us, but these cases feel more dense yeah, than, than our CDL 12. Thank you, Personas, even for doing zipper, that. Even the zipper feels a little different. The zipper feels better, and the it, the, the case, the material itself feels uh, fatter. If you look back on our 328 to CDL 12 transition, we made that comment a few years back. So what is really gonna be nice, like putting these cases on, the covers on the subs, it's- And the snap on Yeah, the it's a, it's the a latch now instead of Velcro. And we can, one person can do this, I think. Whereas before, this we had to kind of go down together with them. That's an improvement. We talked about the casters already. And so what we're gonna do is get ourselves framed in here and then I'm gonna go out and park the truck. Another observation we made is that the handles are orientated differently on this, and that'll just be something to get used to, but the handles themselves are comfortable. Ready? One, two, three. What do you think? Yeah, I think that works. We don't have our drink sliders. We'll just have to slap hands today. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, there's the first real shot for us on a on the primary speaker poles that we use, not the shorties for a single sub and a main. Looks good, Stace, huh? So you may have noticed Stacy and I switching sides when we were flipping that sub, and that's because we each have our preferred side to lift. And that way it's just more muscle memory and not thinking, um, which we don't like to think. But no, seriously, it's just muscle memory and what we're comfortable doing. So we try to always repeat our lifts and do it the same, the same side in the same way. I just did something bad. <laughs> yes, you did. And that's being overconfident. What I just did is I lifted and I twisted. Lifts need to be lift and then stay. Shouldn't be doing multiple movements, especially twisting. And that's overconfidence. I'm thinking, oh, it's a lighter speaker. I can just, no. As soon as that's when, you, when your guard is down, that's when you're gonna do something to your back. And I just busted myself and I'm admitting it. I, that was a bad lift on my part. Okay, this is the first time we've been stumped on our Donner dongles where we got two issues. Number one, I forgot to reprogram the, the DMX on there and that is on me. But the second issue with the Donner DMX, I don't know if there's like substantial 2.4 gigahertz in here. Could try changing channels. I'd have to look through the manual on how to do that. And I just, I think that's something I'll just, we'll, we'll take this back home and figure it out. But Stacey, we've been on really big stages and stuff, but there's a lot going on around here. I'm gonna go with that. We'll test it when we get home. We're wiring them off for tonight. They'll see another day. What, you mean go old school? Yep. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's 402. And I'm gonna turn the system on. And I just wanted to, say that I'm gonna just go with the factory defaults. I'm gonna start that way and start it at zero. The cabinet's at zero. And I'll show you the settings here in a minute. Get these both powered on. So what am I gonna do for settings? On the subs, I'm going zero dB. I'm pat crossing them over at 100, polarity, regular preset two, which is set for one cabinet. And that's about it for this cabinet. Exit, I don't need to save. And then on the CDL10P, again, zero dB. And I'm going bo mode one box. Have the high pass filter on it's with the CDL sub 18. And that's it. I think we got a drummer. Okay. Hey, man. How are you? Good. How are hey, you? Let's turn them on. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's see what we got. I got my royalty free music, so it's not the stuff that I'm used to hearing, but I'll do that a little bit later. It's always good to have nice reference recordings. As I mentioned earlier, I was going with the preset one, and the one thing I noticed with it is it, it pops the mid range a little bit, and the like 500, 640, and, and feels like some of the high end too, which we'll see. I, I 
I'm not a huge mid-range mixer, but it, it definitely is a difference in tone. But I think I just cut a little bit and it's sounding okay. So we're just gonna, like I said, I wanna stick with the basics or stick with the presets and and then adjust from there if I need to. But check, check, check. Check, so, check. Do you want me to wait to pour these in or? Why can't, why, okay. what, does he not have, did he not have a pillow in there or what? I can't fit this, I can't fit the mic through. Oh, okay, that's fine then. Gotcha. I don't want to shove it. Nope, don't want to shove it. Check, check, check. Check, two, hey, hey. Two, one, one, two, hey, hey. Well, check, two, 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 one, two, hey, hey, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, hey, hey, two, two, one, one, two. Check, check. Check one two hey check check two check one two hey check one two well, sounds pretty good to me yeah let's start with the kick drum just I have good first time. How, how's the kick drum for your monitor? Good, I mean, the kick drum is small enough for you. Yeah, I can, I can feel the air in the, net, the air okay. tonight. Yeah, it felt good. Um, I did back off, or I, I recompensated, but I did back off your kick drum gain a little bit. So I, but I boosted it back up on the other side. Still, is it still okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, we'll just throw your vocal back there as long as we're here. Two, two, one. Check, check, two. Yeah, it's... Two, one, one, one. One, 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 two. Two, one, two.
He, 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 he. He, 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 two, two, one, two. Yep, we're, yeah, same two. He'll be, he, he, two, two. I have no problem with that with a second one. That is totally fine. Two. Check, check, two, one, two. Check, one, two, hey, hey, hey. Check, 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 check. Check. Two, one, check. Check, one, two. Check, check. Check, one, two, hey. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. Two, one, two, two. Check one, two, hey, hey. Okay, everybody, it is 517. We are set up and we fired up the CDL 10Ps and the sub 18s for the first time. And here are my initial thoughts. Number one, do they sound the same as the CDL 12s? No, they don't. And that's okay. They're just, they're a different cabinet. One of the things I noticed is that the one speaker configuration mode pumps a little bit more mid-range into the system. And if you saw earlier, I was kind of dialing that back. And that to me is kind of a preference thing. I'm just not a huge mid-range presence type guy. I'm kind of a happy scoop a little bit more. But I, I think the reason for that is just with the one box, it kind of boosts up that, that those cutting frequencies. So I can see why they did that but I may end up going to two box configuration where that just kind of cuts some of that. So that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing I noticed is that the zero DB, they feel like the system's hotter and I had to kind of readjust my gain structure. And, I, and what I did there at the end is I just brought the mains down a little bit because I like to run my channel faders up. So the gain structure or the output feels a little bit hotter than, than the CDL 12s. And, I noticed that a little bit in the garage. That's just a difference. I think the big thing here to know is that right now I am not concerned. Are these cabinets sounding good? They sound they sound really good. Are they the same as our CDL 12? No, they're not. And that is something that I was sensing and actually talking to Presonus. Their characteristics are a little bit different in some of the DSP perhaps. And then as far as maybe the polypropylene versus the wood. The subs absolutely kick. I'm digging those so far, the CDL 10 P's. I'm digging those as well. I just wanted to let you guys know that, do you think they're like for like? Now we don't have the CDL 12 P's. I can't compare to them, but from the CDL 12's that we have, just a different characteristic, not bad, not good, just different. And let's, uh, I hope it's a great night with these things, which I think it will be. Everybody, it's 704 and we got through the first set 
and this is what the EQ is looking like. It was great to be able to start off on the slower side. Everything's going just fine. I did turn the crossover down to 90 hertz on the sub to get a little just more of the bass in, in there, not so much. Uh, I felt it, it was just kind of supplementing this a little bit. So I wanted to back it off and we're going to be starting in with the dance set a little bit more, but things are settling in and uh, so far everything is, is going really good. Well, guess what the cat drogan once again. Look who's here. <laughs> Welcome back. Gotta help, right? Yeah, gotta Somebody, help. Somebody's gotta tear it down. That, that load in or load Ooh. out, it's, we gotta, you gotta help me with that. Yeah, but for here, I'll sure. hand this over to you. So what I missed? Oh, you missed all kinds of, they were dancing on the table and doing everything. <laughs> hey, it's another, another corporate in Minnesota. It's going really well. I'm so glad we were able to try this out, the new cabinets, the Sub-18 and the CDL-10Ps CDL here. Perfect for the room. And you said it, the band has complimented them. Everything is going as I expected. And we'll do a more detailed summary once we get back home. But we got one more quick set and we're done. The big loadout and we're gonna hit the road.
It's about 10.53, or it is 10.53. We got out of there, out of the room. We decided we were gonna stage everything because they wanted to set the room. So we got out of their way. We got everything lined up here. And we're gonna start taking it down and then kind of go from there. We don't know if the kitchen is gonna have a bunch of people in it. Still, I'm doubting they won't. So we might just get things in there. And then go from go from there. But what do you want? The other speaker or this? Okay. Just, just like we did before. Oh, she's in instruction mode. I'm being schooled. Do you want another speaker or is that about all we can take? Um, that's about all we can take. Alright, take this and can you do you got this or do you want me to Okay, I'll start getting the rest lined up. Okay. We love loading out through kitchens. Right, Stacy. Yeah. Do you want me behind? I don't know. No, I don't. Well, watch out! Watch out! Oh. This is tight. This is really tight. Um, I see. Yeah, I probably can't get this corner. You're gonna have to go. Can you put, can you push it back. I can't. I'm good. Okay. Are we gonna make it? Okay. Okay. Right by the hair of our chinny chin chin. Yep. Oh, hold on. All right. Get around this corner. This is our last chair. Okay, we're done too. So. Good night, guys. Me too. All right, I got it from here. Well, I can't get through. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's. I think I got this. I don't think this floor is ever dry, is it? No. Okay, I gotta go get a truck. the truck yep. okay. Okay. all right Bye. yeah get things kind of set did you miss me tonight um maybe uh i was a little involved my my head was straight into these cabinets but yes i of course i did but i was there for the most important part the load in and load out <laughs> Well, and then I had to run the light show myself, too, and that, oh. that's always... <laughs> anyway. I'm sure that's always fun. So, what do you think? What are these? Are they... Everything we thought they would be? Or my concerns? Do I have any concerns? The answer is, I don't have concerns. They sound great. The polypropylene versus wood. I, I know that's kind of just... It's really old school thinking, you guys, and I'm kind of an old school guy. <laughs> you know, I just traditionally go for the wood cabinet. They inherit the CDL characteristics of what we uh, enjoy and love about our CDL 12s. The fact that they're really easy to mix, the vocal presence over the top, they just delivered the same. They sound a little bit different, and but the cool thing is there's two really nice things, is you have the different DSP settings. And so it's just getting them dialed in the taste. Now, do I expect one of these cabinets to exceed a CDL 12? I don't. We've talked about making sure that you have the right expectations for the sizing of the cabinets you get. 
Again, the benefit to these are, or the CDL12s is that they're expandable. And for ground stacking, you can add up to two. If we had four of these, I think this would get us by on most everything we do. So what I hear you saying is that these are a compact speaker for a smaller space or just that the type of space that it's good for, or like a wedding ceremony, perhaps. Or in bands. I mean, yeah. the corporate stuff, exactly oh, okay. what we did tonight, DJs. For us, what I see us using these for is exactly what you just said. We're going to use them for a, a smaller room, smaller mm -hmm. space. I don't mind our CDL-12s at all as far as have, you know uh, carrying them around, but... I got to admit, this was kind of nice. And and I think you were talking about the subs, too, that you were really impressed with. Their yeah, the, the subs are thumping as well. No problems with these. I don't think they make our 18Ss anymore. If I was out looking for new subs, I would have no problem, no issues with these. We got the covers for both of them. We got the casters for the subs. Overall, really just happy, perfect first time run but stay tuned if you want some bonus footage to see us doing some troubleshooting of the lights yep stick around <laughs> if you want to see the troubleshooting of our donner dmx wireless dongles the first time we've been like bamboozled and had to bail and that was in part just a lack of time to troubleshoot yeah. thanks everybody for watching two thumbs up two thumbs up on the subs two thumbs up on the cdl 10 p's and we'll see you at the next gig. Well, thanks for sticking around for some behind the scenes troubleshooting with our Donner DMX wireless units last night. That is the first time we had kind of an unexplained issue. And unfortunately, there was a couple things that kind of threw us off with the Panel light, one of the panel lights not being assigned the correct DMX starting address. We resolved that, but the issue persisted and it was either user error or a technical issue. And I'm going to expect that maybe we got our first technical issue. I could be wrong, but one of the things we could have done is we could have switched the frequency on this and on these and we and i didn't want to go down that we were focused on getting the system up we wanted to get the new speakers fired up so we just ran wired and we decided that uh we're going to troubleshoot this at home what we did do though is we did rule out the dongles because we tried a couple of different transmitters and then we also have spare transmitter as well and that didn't work so i'm going to go it was a technical, like we just had a issue with the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum there, but let's hook it up and find out. Okay, what's important when you're troubleshooting is to start with a baseline and a baseline of known good status. And we know last night that the wired option worked for us. And so that's what I'm gonna start with is First, baselining and making sure that everything is working. I ran a XLR cable, plug in the fixture, make sure that the starting address is right, which it is. It should be on 60. And light repositioned. Okay, I'll grab Luminaire here. I got the scene loaded and let's turn it on. I'll turn that a little bit so we can see it. And it, turn that off. I know what the problem is. We are likely not on the right Wi Fi. Give me just a moment. Okay, we're on the right Wi Fi now. That is actually one of the things at home and dealing with wireless anything is making sure that you're on the right Wi-Fi network. If I had a dime for every time that I realized that I was not on the right wireless, we know we're good, it's working. So I'll black it out. And now let's switch over to the Donner wireless system and see what happens.
Okay, just making sure it's on. We'll plug it in. Grab a dongle. Now, one of the things I could have done is we, I don't think we noted which ones we tried to use. We tried a few of them and for, for all of them to not work, that, that seems very unlikely. But it would have been the smarter thing to do would have been to have grabbed, kept the ones we did try out. Let's get one working here. There we go. We're blinking green. Plug it in. Oh, okay, the big moment of truth. Will this turn on? Here we go. And it does. And it seems to be working fine. Wow, okay. Well, that's both a good thing and not so good thing. The good thing is, is that nothing's wrong. The concern is, is that now we know it's possible that we could have a failure. Now, what I need to do is I need to brush up on how to change the frequencies on this. So if this issue ever happens again, I will be, able, be better prepared to combat it a little bit. And one of the challenges is all this gear and technology is you get things working and when they just work, you can kind of forget how to operate them or how to configure them. And we do have the manuals. The manual was out in the truck. The truck was a long ways away. So by the time we did all that, it would have just been quicker to wire it and that's what we did. But I'm, I'm glad these are working. Again, we're just gonna have to figure out how to reprogram the frequency so in the future we can quickly address that and hopefully not have this be so stressful next time. Well, hey, that was pretty easy troubleshooting, actually. And the thing is, is troubleshooting is always easier in the comfort of the no stress environment of your, of your home workshop. And I just wanted to show you, we do have the manuals for this. We keep digital manuals as well. However, for the on the computer, and but for the Donner DMX, there isn't an online version, at least anything we could find. And truthfully, they are simple to program, but when you're under time pressure and other things, other priorities that you have, you gotta choose whether or not you're gonna take the time to even go through reprogramming these versus just going to a plan B. If we had a bigger light show, or maybe if we had a little bit more time, or we weren't trying out other gear, we may have just gone this option, but it is always hindsight in the sense that when you're at the gig, it is always more difficult to think clearly in some cases. So we just went with the wired, but it's working, easy fix, or wasn't even a fix, but we know now I'm gonna make sure that we're up on this and certainly take note the next time we're at that venue. That's it for now from the Sound Couple. Thank you for sticking around for this. Hopefully you found this extra bonus information helpful and we'll see you guys at the next gig.